let's um, let's give you Iggy Valley a nice big round of applause and have her join us. <laughs> good morning to you, Ellie. How are you? Hi, Ellie. How good morning. Good morning. Come on, hello, everyone. <laughs> How many, Ellie? <laughs> oh, don't. don't. Sam Smith. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So let's oh, not go there. So good to see you. Um, Fabrizio, <laughs> thank you for being with us. You don't, don't feel obliged to hang around. You may want to get out into the summer sunshine, but stick around for as long as you want to um, mm -hmm. this morning. It's always great to hang out with you and have a bit of fun here on Good Morning Portugal Show. Ali, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Really good. I'm, I'm not sure what's happened to our sunshine, though. We've had the most amazing weather. And I woke up this morning, taking the dog for a walk, mist, cloud everywhere. So, oh, really? That's not yeah. very nice. And, and tonight, of course, uh, we have got the battle of Central Portugal versus the Algarve. So that's not going too well for the Algarve, boasting about the weather. You should keep that quiet uh, in, 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 in light of that that's happening this evening. So, but ball's all over it, I'm sure. And uh, with these sort of situations, it could quite easily be very sunny and unbearably hot by midday, couldn't it? Yeah, it changes so quickly out here. It's it's actually a, a bit humidad today. It's a little bit heavy, which is quite unusual down here. We we moved to the western Algarve on purpose to get more of the kind of Atlantic breeze and a fresher temperature. So it's okay. um, quite unusual. But yeah, I've thrown the three and a half tog duvet away into the storage, um, and I literally slept with the window open last night. So there we go. That's an annual milestone, isn't it? You know, yeah. summer's coming when you change your tog rating. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We'll get rid of it completely. There's no duvet anymore now. That won't come back till about October, probably. Just along the coast, we've got a weather report. Sun is blazing in Portimao. So there you go. And that's why Victoria lives there, because uh, that's what tends to happen most of the time. OK, the new snapshot is out. It is fantastic. And I'm not Thank just you. saying that because I've got the... Uh, the center you're in it <laughs> careful where you put that staple alley um but it's, it's fantastic um it's, it, is it a lot of hard work it, i mean you've just, you've done so much yeah I, well i told you last month didn't i 10 years ago it started out as this little a4 pdf that we sent to family and friends and it's just exploded really so it's the biggest ever this one it's 110 pages i'm not quite sure how that happened but okay so by uh, 2025 it'll, it'll be like the encyclopedia britannica oh, gosh, I, hope not. I can't manage that but i okay. somebody asked me yesterday i love putting it together it's so interesting and we feature so many different people every month who all clamor to get in there now i'm booked for the cat's questions where we interview a friend's dog i'm booked till may next year i've i've, wow. <laughs> I've got so that's pets a in. Feature. okay that's yeah. that's a lovely lovely feature isn't it and that's yeah. really booked folks um as as, if, as yeah. you've just discovered here we got that scoop uh this morning and, and clearly the way it's put together it's vibrancy uh, it just it's a delight to look at you obviously love putting it together um and here we are uh, if, i wonder if you could talk us through a little bit of it this morning you've made me a special little addition of it haven't you i do i've called it your vignette i think that's quite a good way of describing Very it nice. but yeah, yeah so yeah after 110 pages i think i've given you about 20 just to give you a, a for it really it's also part of mrs m's anniversary present and i shall sign it for i'll print it off and sign it for you <laughs> got tin foil and now a signed copy of snapshot could this day get any better could it get any better no yeah. <laughs> oh, God. i'm gonna have a word with you later all right. you thank might. you yes all right yes yeah, so obviously we always feature those photographs he loves getting out on the beaches out here i mean how can you not enjoy photographing right. them i mean they're amazing um yeah. and that one's really interesting the one that's on the left hand picture there because i didn't know it's actually got a name um, it's the Lijoao de Gavotas, which I had no idea that a little outcrop like that would actually have its own name. Um, and it's actually classified. It's a special nesting area um, it? because it, it's a nesting site for the herons. I had no idea. So it's actually a protected little rock. Very it's, nice. It's and is that how, just how big is that? Is that like, you know, as high as the coastline there? Is it huge? It's yeah. When you look over the cliffs, it actually comes up quite high, um, almost level. It's it's an amazing structure that's just been left behind from the erosion. But it's mm. it's beautiful, isn't it? It's, it's uh, a real a feature of, of that bit of the coast. So it is like a lovely. great big dinosaur tooth sticking out. Yeah, I love it. And obviously, we've um, Dave. I can never really do justice to some of his photos because they're actually large panoramics, and obviously, I'm slotting them onto an A4 page. Uh, but a couple lovely. of those beaches there are, are just beautiful on the west coast, aren't they? So yeah. you, he's always down either um, Amarera, Kinirosh, 
um, or around, if you go Villa de Bispo and then literally oh, yes, follow yes. the signs for the coast um, and, the, and the beaches, Priage, um, you'll, you'll come to Castellejo and Cordoama and they are stunning, aren't they? Yeah, um, that really is very beautiful. They're this lovely. Okay. Top right hand corner is the sort of landscape we were talking about before about the Lagoa de Albufeira. Uh, this yes. sort of phenomenon here is otherworldly, absolutely brilliant. Okay, it's, uh, it's beautiful, isn't it? So, and then he had great fun trooping himself around Silver's Cathedral. We've been there loads of times before, but it's uh, it's a stunning, beautiful building and quite unusual for a lot of the Algarve churches. There's not a lot of gold, there is some, but compared with a lot of the traditional churches, this one's more austere almost. It's, it's it? beautiful though. It's very peaceful, beautiful high roof on it. You don't have to have any faith at all to go in and enjoy a building like that. I mean, the, the architecture is quite stunning there. So well, well said, well said. And I was talking about this yesterday, you know, we, we can get triggered, can't we, by religion and, and references yeah. uh, to the G word. Um, but, you know, you can still be moved, can't you, on all sorts yeah. of levels by going into a, a building that has been seasoned by yeah. centuries of contemplation this is a beautiful experience for human beings whatever your faith yeah. denomination whether you have one or not and um, i love the, the architecture i mean it it's a very symmetrical it's yeah. um, building the, the way it's designed and it just draw i mean look that photo's there it's lovely but you're drawn into the font at the front just because of the design Ooh, and shape of the building stuff. it's it's stunning but i i like it i i like the almost somber kind of interior that it gives it's it's very nice very contemplative lovely very yeah. good, and low, but low on the bling index um, for anyone. Low on bling, know. which is nice, isn't it? <laughs> Compared with some it can of be them. a nice change. It can be a nice change yeah. away from that ostentatiousness. Of yeah. Um, and this, I thought, was a photo, another one of Dave's photographs. Turns out it's one of your acrylics. You're so talented, Ali. <laughs> yeah, I've really enjoyed last month. I actually did four paintings last month, um, including that one. As Dave photographed the door, um, so I snaffled the, paint, the photograph very quickly and, and set off in the studio with it. But I really love these old doors and windows because you just mm. want to open the door and see who's inside, don't you? It's, uh, I'm always shocked. You get a real old yes. ruin and you're there photographing or I'm there sketching ready to paint. And suddenly the door opens and some old Portuguese lady or man comes out and you're like, I thought it was a ruin and they're living there. So it's, uh, it, can, it can make you jump sometimes. But And then uh, they give you a bag of oranges. It's fantastic. Yeah. And, 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 and behind these doors, I think it's something to do with the, um, the past and the privacy of the home. But yeah. these doors do contain the most incredible scenes inside sometimes, don't they? Mm -hmm. If you do manage to get a look in, and I'm not suggesting yeah. you do have a neb through someone's keyhole to do this, but occasionally as you're walking past, you do, it's like, what, what's behind there? And you see it and you go, wow, I didn't realise, you know, there were sort of 10 um, stuffed GNU heads hanging along the corridor there or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, these strange things do go on behind these doors. And I think that's part of the psychology of Portugal, isn't it? The privacy of the home, perhaps during mm -hmm. previous decades. And, um, you know, it's fairly, uh, well, you get a beautiful door like this, but then the action is going on behind the doors there in the pri privacy of the, of the Very home. Very much so, yeah. Beautiful. And it's so, so intricate and beautiful as well. I mean, it, I had great fun painting all those white notes, like a metal grill. Uh, yeah. Half the up, but uh, trying to get the symmetry on those, but uh, beautiful. Great 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 yeah, great. Almost like giving kind of a fashion through, through those uh, metal grates as well. There. Okay, so we have Peter Giacomini. Giacometti, yeah. uh, Giacometti, I found out, the artist and, and uh, sort of Renaissance man Giacometti had a real big connection with Portugal. Mm -hmm. Here's Peter Giacomini. Who is he? Oh, he's great. I can't wait to meet him. He's uh, the, the Vista Verde have started this wonderful thing every month where we have a meet the author, uh, where they present their books and do a little talk and then a little book signing and some tea and cake afterwards. Um, he's fascinating because I've met him a couple of times, but I don't know much about him. And I didn't actually want to research too much before the day because I want to be surprised by his talk. Fair uh, but he's worked in the hotel trade for over 40 years and he's worked for all sorts like Disneyland, Paris, um, and he's worked all over the world. Um, so his book is the story of him working in all these hotels. Um, so I, I think it's going to be quite fascinating. It's one of the, it's a bit like looking through the door on the painting, isn't it? Getting somebody on the inside yes. of a hotel and uh, finding out what it's really like and who the guests are and what happens. Stories there. he'll be able to tell. Mm. And it looks like Vista Verde does not quite a nice afternoon tea there. They That's do a really nice afternoon tea. Yeah, it's stunning. Very, very beautifully presented food. Lovely. Are they really cucumber sandwiches with the crust cut? Yeah, yeah, no, all the, yeah yes, they do. Check it um, out. Salmon, um, yeah, all sorts. Lovely. I was just about to ask if that was clotted cream. 
It should yeah. be shit. Do you know, I found my husband is a Devon boy, and I yeah. finally found that, uh, well, we call it Iceland, but it's overseas supermarket here in uh, this one in Portimao. Um, in the freezer section, they've got clotted cream Have and they, really? they sell scones, and of course, they sell strawberry jam. So I surprised my husband the other week with this little package. I wish I could have taken a photograph of his face when he opened the bag. Like, is, is, it, is it clotted cream? He went like a little fire on. I'm like, yes. Wow. So that came straight into the fridge, defrosted, ready for the next morning. Um, and his little face scoffing it. It was quite amusing. Well, I won't ask because I can't remember whether he should have put the cream or the jam on first. And don't Please don't mention this to him because he, he'll be so shocked about that. He will he? tell you instantly. I, it's hilarious, actually. If you're from Devon, I think I'm, yeah. I hope I get this the right way. I way. hope you're right. Yeah, because jam I don't first, know. cream on top from Devon, and if you're yeah. Cornish, cream first, jam on top. Mm, um, yeah. Never right. the twain shall mix. So no, you right. can really tell whether somebody's from Devon or Cornwall. Dates That's back to the 15th century Scone Wars between Devon and Cornwall, I think. Absolutely. But that looks good. Um, Algarve, yeah. you're doing well on the afternoon tea. Where do we go in Lisbon for an afternoon tea experience and maybe a mm -hmm. G&T for Brizio and Ian? Uh, is, it safe to, is it safe to go into timeout market by the by the time afternoon tea time? I've never seen anywhere do something like that though, timeout market. Mm, but there was, there was a, I'll think about that because there was somewhere I passed once and I was looking in the window what they were doing. I can't remember where it was. Oh, we'll keep you to me. That, that tells you a lot of our afternoon tea at time. You're having a siesta. That's why you don't know, is it? You're having a siesta <laughs> afternoon. Yeah. Tea. Right. And I'm sure Dave looked at that and said, proper job made when yeah. he was uh, eating that. Uh, thank you very it much. It's a lovely <laughs> big spread in here. And yeah. it, this, this was a really, that was a really fantastic invitation, Ali, because... Go back, go back. Stop jumping the pages too quickly, young man. Enjoy oh, your moment. Okay, it was brilliant you. fun interviewing you. It was great. Oh, and I, look, I haven't shared it, but it's worth reading just for your funny story. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, yes. Yeah, because I... <laughs> forgot about that yes <laughs> and when you get put on the spot like this because this is this is mainly my job isn't it to ask the questions mm. you you asked me some questions and i was thinking wow i didn't i didn't remember that or how do i see things and it, it gave me a really nice chance to ponder and reflect because i'm so, normally so shallow and vacuous and and um you know temp momentary that i don't get those moments of reflection and you gave <laughs> me uh, one or two of them so thank you very much for that i really, really enjoyed that oh you can pop round to andrew's place uh you can for, he's available for real English breakfast, and we have real tea and afternoon tea stuff. Um, yes, I, do you mean porcelain and the family silver there? Stuffed is not cutting it for me right now. Not synonymous with afternoon tea there, Lord Gilchrist. Uh, but yes, I'm sure you're keeping your, your lordly end up there. Um, oh dear, what's, what's happened? <laughs> yes, the monkey. <laughs> I had great fun mocking up that picture. Yeah, um, well... Dave started off, he, he's got into Instagram reels, don't ask, but he's found this reel where you take a tortilla and you get ham and cheese slices and you fold it all up, especially, and you put it in the toaster, at which yes. point I have to go and watch this. And it's called a toaster dilla, apparently. Um, he decided it was so nice, he went and made a second one and left the new packet of ham sat on top of the counter in the kitchen. And we uh -oh. This side of the county, you know, the edge bit where little paws can jump up and little noses can have a little sniff and a nibble. Um, yes. and about half an hour later, he comes wandering over to me. Um, do you know where my ham went? And I'm like, what, what <laughs> ham? Well, I'm busy in Bushnido. I have no idea what you're on about. And he, I'm like, what ham? Because the um, packet of ham. Uh, you see at this point where he's like humming and harring and the packet of ham I left in the kitchen and like, where did you leave it in the kitchen? It's like, uh, might have left it on the counter. And there's just this empty packet of ham left at sort of seven o'clock at night. And we looked, the best bit was we looked down at Zara and I went, where's the ham, Zara? And she literally looked up at me, licked her lips. <laughs> not, even, not even a guilty face. <laughs> yeah, no, very guilty. So, oh dear, Dave, yeah. put the ham away. when you. But you, my son, my son, it must be uh, like an Instagram thing because my son's making those, although he fried his, I think. Um, oh, in God. a really healthy I sort of way. We can put them into the our oh, nice little um, air fryer as well. We haven't tried that yet. So. Okay, so oh, the, 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 the tostadilla is a, a wrap with ham and cheese in it. You fold it up and then toast it or fry it. But it sounds great. Sounds it, very good. 
I Cheers, can't eat Dave. that sort of thing, but uh, Dave said it tasted so nice he went back for a second one. So there you and go. It was, it was enjoyed by, well, nearly all the family. And you've got Give a Dog a Home here, of course, as well. That's a big dog. You've got to have quite a big home for this one, I think. Yeah, he looks beautiful, though, isn't he? He's a gorgeous mm, dog. He uh, apparently, he walks really, he's a really gentle dog. Walks Often the big dogs are the gentlest and the quietest. You'd be it's surprised. But it's people, can, people can be like that as well, though, can't they? Yeah, we, we always, I used to, we always put one of their dogs every month in. Um, we had a lovely message the other month because you can, if you can't rescue, obviously, all of them, um, but you can actually um, sponsor a dog. Um, and one of our readers, literally, we had a message through that one of our readers from Snapshot contacted Aza and they're now sponsoring the dog every month. So whoever they are, thank you very much, because that's Brilliant. that's what it's about, isn't it? It's, it's nice being able to share these things and hopefully be able to support charities. Um, so it it's good. is. Yeah. Association Ecologista e Zufilia de Algiers or Aza there. Not as good as our name for our dog rescue centre, Crapper, up here on the Silver Coast, but let's move on. That's um, a perfect name. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Um, so a recipe. We, do we like the look of that, fellas? Would you eat that? Mm, oh, yeah. I would. I love a rostopat. Yeah. yeah, it's a Portuguese favourite, isn't it? And have you got a sponsorship there with a rice company, Ali? No, I just put it up because it's a gulliere, so I wasn't sure people would. It's a, a different that to do a traditional Irish de pato, apparently, I'm no cook, um, is the agulia rice. So it's mm. um, a special rice rather than just your average normal white rice, which would be quite clumpy. I think the way it's cooked um but yes. I, I i leave it all and my dear friend ivan from uh relish portugal sent us the recipes we've spoken. it's been too long since we've spoken to ivan yes yeah, so that's the good. duck rice uh yeah. recipe there have you fabrizio do you cook this at home uh duck rice we do not but we have a favorite place where we go and eat it okay all right because i, I guess it's getting dangerously special. close sorry Ian, what was that Friday lunchtime special. <laughs> yeah. Is it? Okay, mm. duck on Friday. Well, okay. last, that's where they, they always do it. So we're like, okay. Well, that's the thing. thing. That is a thing, isn't it? There, there you, you do get a, a, a sort of clockwork menu, which actually can yes. be very reassuring. It might be a daily special, but there, there may be also a, the, the weekly favourite mm -hmm. as well. So in your neighbourhood, the duck rice there. And it's about the starch, isn't it, when cooking with, I'm sure Fabrizio is a, possibly as a risotto um, a creator. It's all about yeah. the starch content in rices, isn't it? That's what you've got to be careful yeah. about. Yeah, well, risotto is very important to have starch in the rice because that's yeah. what will give the creamy texture. But, mm. for example, for a lot of Asian, which I think Arroche de Pato is originally um, derivated by the influence of um, China. Okay. As, um, as a contact point between Chinese and and the Macau, I suppose, the um, uh, um, colony years. Yes. Um, and for example, in, in Asian fried rices or rice dish, the, 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 the starch is what you shouldn't have at all. So the, the rice get washed and washed and washed and washed and washed yep. a lot yep. of time before getting cooked. So I guess this, yeah, this is the opposite. So yeah, the amount of starch, I guess, you can either make or break a dish. Whatever. Absolutely right. My Asian mother taught me to wash the rice. Absolutely. You want, you yeah, want yeah. Dry, dry, fluffy, you get rid of all the starch there. And old rice, apparently, the, the, the Chinese prize old rice because a, a lot of the starch has actually fallen off in a dust um, by the time you get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So there you and go, when then. fried, should be cold, cold, cold from the fridge, really. Well, some warm. great cooking tips this morning. Yes, fry cold rice because you'll, yeah. you'll, get, you'll get into a sticky mess. Um, mm -hmm. If you try and cook hot rice, um, which is a metaphor for life, possibly as well. Um, okay. <laughs> right. Um, that's, uh, these are all your awards here for your wonderful Cat the Dog book as well, Ali. Yeah, we celebrated yesterday was the anniversary of it being published. I can't believe it's been a year. So I actually had the real joy because I promised I dedicate 15% of all the profits to charities. And literally, I sent, uh, I've got one more check to send, uh, PayPal to send. But less today, I managed to send off to SOS Algarve Animals in the Algarve and to AISA um, a nice donation to each of them, which was, it's part of why I wanted to write the book, really, is to raise that awareness of rescue dogs, particularly, yeah. of course, Spanish water dogs. We you know, just love them. Um, 
but to be able to support charities as well that help rescue dogs. Um, and I've had so many messages um, from people that have loved the book. Um, and I had someone the other week who actually said that they'd gone out and rescued a Spanish water dog of their own, which oh, was lovely. just wonderful for me. Yeah. Um, so that's really why the book's there. It's to, to raise the profile. Um, and obviously, of course, now we've lost her to, to keep her memory. And it's... it's uh, yeah, great job. Well, well done. That's fantastic news. Thank you. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. Um, and of course, cat's questions here. And my top five Algarve. Who's this then? Oh, that's Elise Slot. She runs Wow Guide Algarve. She runs a private tour company here in the Algarve. I mean, who better to ask for top places to go in the Algarve than a tour guide? Um, yeah. And she's she slotted in some great ideas there. So that's that's yeah. always a great feature to put in. I enjoy doing that. It's, so uh, she's in there in the May edition there as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what's the big, what's the big question? We're meeting Daphne. I see. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And uh, Daphne's a rescue dog as well. Yeah. Um, actually owned by, a, he's a retired police officer in America. So um, some very funny stories. I love cat's questions because it, I think it frees people up to have some fun with their answers because it's not them answering it, it's their dog or cat. Um, and it's amazing the things they get up to and the things they talk about their owners. <laughs> it's quite good fun. Yeah. So oh, it's, it's uh, lovely. Like great a reverse fun. interview. But, uh, and we should point out, Snapshot is not just about the Algarve, is it? I mean, it is Algarve-based, um, but you have, you're talking to people from all over the world in this publication. Yes, yes yeah. that, that's the plan, especially with the books and the reviews. Um, I think it's great to just, you know, I, I love highlighting uh, particularly indie authors. I mean, uh, you know, it's um, it's a great world of, and we support each other. That's the yeah. beauty of it, I think. It's it's lovely to be able to do that um, and obviously to be able to promote their books or their work or their business at the same time. And meet um, them as you can. Yeah, it's good. I really yeah. enjoy it. But Kat's questions, I do I do enjoy writing that every month. It's good. Talking of, so we're meeting the author, Sharon Hayhurst, in this edition as well. And um, a, a few book reviews then, it would seem to. Yes, yeah. I always Well, I'm a big reader, so I like, I, you know, whenever I share... Um, the book reviews, it's because I've read it and I've enjoyed it. Um, yeah. That's the bottom line for me. I mean, loads of people send me, could you review my book? And I'm going, well, I'll have a look at it. But I'm not best, promising. Because it's, best you know, you've read recently? Oh, I think it has to be the top one there. Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry. Um, it was recommended to me by someone and I really enjoyed it. Beautifully written. Just a very simple story, as often the best books are. Um, but it was, he started off in Devon. He found out that a dear old friend was dying right in the northeast of, of Britain. And he started off walking to the post office to just send her a letter, hoping, you know, get well soon sort of thing. And then he decided he would start walking with the letter. And he kept walking all the way to her care home where she was. Um, but he had a very um, witchy wife back home. It wasn't too impressed with him that he just set off and never came home. Um, but it's just... <laughs> it's because I think it's just it's either coming out or has just come out in the UK as a as a um, um, film. Um, yes. with Jim Broadbent, who's an amazing actor, so I'm hoping to, to get my hands on a copy of that. But uh, that's, beautiful book, really. Okay. But I I only share reviews of books that I've actually read and enjoyed myself, and so right. I have an eclectic kind of taste in books. So there's usually a mix in there. But I got see. goosebumps hearing about the plot of that story there. Incredible. Great. Well, really what I love book. the idea. That's going to make a good movie as well if it hasn't already yeah, been made. Yes, definitely. Um, coming up at 10 on the Iberian FM phone, and we've got Rebecca Jones joining us, uh, whose son is missing in Portugal at the moment with his dad. So we'll talk to Rebecca about where she is with that search and to see if we can help. So that's uh, after 10 o'clock this morning. Um, and we're previewing now snapshots. Um, and so, yeah, thank you for that book recommendation. That sounds like a lovely story. <laughs> And, um, oh, a little bit of Portuguese uh, yeah. tuition here. Thank you very much for that as well. Always useful and always good to learn a bit of Portuguese, isn't it? And people who think they're never going to crack it, just keep going, folks. You're going to be fine. Um, and um, here, what is this delightful place we're seeing here with the pink bicycle? Oh, it was, it was uh, Kinta the Day photograph last month. Um, it's a, a B&B Kinta, it's, but it's beautiful. They We just wanted to feature it because they've done such a lovely job. And it's one of the things I think, Dave enjoys most about his work when he's out photographing property and real estate is you get to have a look around, don't you? You get to, it's a bit like going back to opening that yes. door again. Um, he gets to go in and, and literally look, but it was just a beautifully presented Kinto down here in the Algarve that you can rent. Um, and he wanted to share 
not only the photographs, but he tries to always explain how he's done his photography and why he shoots in a particular way. Um, and real estate photography is actually more complicated than people think. Mm. I think people oh, get it is. Isn't it? Out and click, and oh, that'll do. But you Most know, definitely. if you've got the, a professional camera, you've got the, the proper lens. Um, Dave always takes at least three or five shots. He, he explains it, and he loses me at this point. Mm. Um, but he yeah. then blends and merges all the different layers so that you've got the perfect view out of the window that's clear while you've got the perfect room um, yes. photographs well. So he kind of shares a little bit of the inside how he photographs in a feature like that. Well, anyone who's looked at Idilishta will know that uh, photographing real estate is an art form, mm. which isn't always doesn't always happen, to be fair, on, mm. uh, on Idilishta. Yeah. So there you go. Um, look there at this. Um, when do we get to meet the lady in the middle there on the bottom row? Uh, <laughs> That's Lule Lule Carnival. You missed that one. That oh, was... <laughs> Lule, what a fantastic place that is. So they're in the back. Yeah. Are they are they all available online? Uh, there. Yes, they are. Yeah. We've uh, there's a full. If you click on that link there, the news um, that website, then you can subscribe. But if yep. you scroll down, um, there's a link to the archive, and I've I've archived at least the last two and a half years worth of editions. Um, on you. So you can just click on any of them. They're, they're all free. So they're there, they'll, they'll stay feast. live. All right. Uh, visual feasts are plenty then, and I'm just yeah. putting the link in. Thank you so much for being here this morning, all of you. Uh, don't go just yet, because I think we've got one, a, a couple more dad jokes to share before we go. Uh, where can I, and a question, and a very important appeal here, where can I find mm. English muffins or crumpets in Lisboa? I mean, he's a lord. Shouldn't he have staff doing this for him? I think, I don't, I don't know the answer to this. Uh, and I'm not one of your staff. <laughs> we, do, we don't know the answer to that either. Oh next time oh, okay. yeah and that's the link there for finding um ali's back catalogs and the current I I issue how much does it cost ali how much is it going to set everybody back to download this this it's snapshot it's 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 i knew that really i knew that really i was building up the tension there and uh, underlining the fact that you do so much um and, and offer such a beautiful magazine and that by no means that's just a fifth of the magazine that we looked at there approximately wasn't it um, so much work, absolutely free, and you can download it from the link that's in there. So final words uh, from Lisbon and the Algarve. As we approach summer, uh, as we were talking about earlier on, Fabrizio and Ian, uh, how, how do you want to send people on their way this morning? Oh. Try to walk out as much as you can now, because yep. if summer has arrived, don't yep. waste your time looking for crumpets. There's no... <laughs> <laughs> The world Very is far more complex and far more beautiful than that. Uh, yeah. yeah. There will, do you know, there'll be a radio show in years to come where you'll be quoted, I think. Uh, don't yeah. waste your life looking yeah. for crumpets. That will, will kill my <laughs> potential career if I will yes. ever have one. Very good. Very good. That, that's a gem for us this morning. See you next month with more like that. <laughs> have a great day, Elizabeth. Ali? Oh, well, I'd just like to say the sun's come out. Yes. <laughs> so I'm, I'm all right now. <laughs> all right, I'm moving all around. Thank you so much uh, for yeah. being here. And uh, we'll see you again next month. Nice big round of applause for you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.